Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here this week. In this week's video, we're gonna be taking a look at how you select the KV value for multiple different applications. Whether you're trying to power an electric vehicle that you can sit in or a power tool such as a lawnmower or grass trimmer, we're gonna go through what is required and how do you actually choose that KV for those specific applications. Let's head over to the whiteboard so that we can figure this out. Let's start off by understanding exactly what KV means if you don't already know. KV essentially represents the amount of output RPM that we can get from the motor and that is going to be unloaded, which is quite important, for every volt that we apply to it. Essentially, the equation looks like this. The total amount of RPM that we're going to get out of that motor is equal to that KV value multiplied by the voltage that you're inputting to that system, or more specifically, that motor. Now, we can actually break down the voltage a step further. Depending on the chemistry that you are planning to use within your own system, this is what's going to change the amount of voltage that you can get out of that battery pack. So let's say that we're going to use a lithium polymer battery for this voltage example. The formula is voltage is equal to the volts per cell of that specific chemistry. In the case of a LiPo battery pack, that is 3.7 volts. And then we multiply that by how many lithium polymer cells you plan to use in your specific battery. In this case, it works out to 22.2 volts. And we're gonna use that value in a couple different examples that we're gonna see today. Let's jump right into our first example, and that's gonna be the bicycle example. We have an image here that represents our bicycle, and we place a motor right here up in blue, and we're gonna run a belt drive all the way down to a pulley that is located and directly mounted to the tire. Now, if you wanna see a video on us taking a brushless motor from the radio controlled hobby and strapping it to a bicycle, let me know in the comment section below. Maybe we can have this as a project for for 2022. Now a couple points that are quite critical for us in this specific example is these three items here. We first need to know what is the motor to pulley tire ratio. So how many times does the motor spin relative to how many times the tire spins? That, next we need to understand the tire circumference. How large is the tire that you're actually going to be rotating that converts to a target speed. So the target speed is something that you have to establish. In our bicycle example, we're gonna talk about 30 kilometers per hour being a good target for us. And I think that's relatively reasonably uh, fair. We're gonna also use a 6S LiPo battery pack. Now for this particular video, we are only talking about how we determine the KV value. We're not gonna get into the actual amount of wattage or power that the motor takes for this specific video as you would need to know that in order to arrive at your target speeds. If you target 30 kilometers an hour, it's going to be very different than targeting, let's say 100 kilometers an hour for your specific vehicle. So just keep that in mind. This is specifically about KV only in this video. So from there, we then need to go and calculate exactly what kind of KV we are going to achieve. And we base this off of the calculation using all three of these items to arrive back at how fast does this motor actually need to spin. When we know the tire circumference, we know the ratio, and we know our target speed, we can then get the motor speed equation from there, and we can determine that. So in order to get 30 kilometers an hour, we went and did the calculation. We understand that we now need 6,000 RPM from our motor to achieve our goal of that 30 clicks. Then we just plug it right into our formula here where our KV is equal to that output RPM divided by the voltage of our battery pack, and then we're gonna divide that by a load factor. So I have load factor up here in green. I have seen that this comes anywhere from between 0.8 to about 0.9 as a percentage. Now, we did talk about up here, the KV represents the amount of RPM that we get per volt at an unloaded factor. So that means there's zero load applied to the motor and you're gonna get that speed essentially from your brushless motor. However, it's different as you start loading up your motor. As you increase the load, the KV actually comes down. This is a factor that is going to help get the correct amount of RPM for us. Now it is an approximation and there is a lot more variables that come into it. However, if you use a number between this, you should arrive at a good 
result that can represent the RPM that you need. So that's how we go and use the load factor. What I've done here in the equation is just taken the average, in which case the KV works out to 318 RPM per volt. So I'm looking for a motor that has a roughly a 320 KV value in order to satisfy the requirements of our bicycle example. So now let's take a look at our grass trimmer example. The first thing that we need to know is the voltage. We're gonna to continue to use our 22.2 volt battery and then we're gonna understand what kind of RPM do we actually need from our grass trimmer. So what I've done is looked at other grass trimmers and find out you know, what kind of speeds do they actually operate at. And what I found is they can operate anywhere from you know, 3000 RPM up to about 8000 RPM depending on what you're actually getting into. So let's choose a value, 5000 RPM sounds good. Uh, from that range, that's a good place to start. We can always adjust our power systems later down the road, but we need a good starting point if we've never done this before. So that 5,000 RPM is going to be a motor to our trimmer head direct drive. We're gonna be seeing whatever the motor spins, that trimmer head is going to be spinning as well. So now that we have our target speed as to what we're looking for from our trimmer, we just go through the exact same calculation that we did above. We take the 5,000, divide it by our 22.2, and then divide it by that load factor, and we get a KV is equal to 265 RPM per volt. So that is essentially how this works when it comes to determining the KV for any application. You first need to know what is the target speed because KV is relating output RPM from your motor. Whenever you know what kind of target speed, whether it be in a vehicle, 30 kilometers an hour, it's gotta be realistic, of course, and or your grass trimmer requiring about 5,000 RPM. If it was a lawnmower, I'd expect it to be somewhere less than 2,000 RPM and so on. Once you know the target speed that you're looking at, that is the perfect starting point. Next, you're gonna to need to know what kind of voltage are you running? If you know the voltage and you know the output RPM of your motor that you're going to require, you can then work back and figure out, determine that KV value. Just keep in mind that we aren't going through power. Power is another part of the equation that has to come into play when you're actually selecting the motor that you're going to use. It has to be able to deliver the correct amount of wattage in order to actually propel or rotate the load that you're going to place on it. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. I hope you have a deeper understanding as to how to actually get to that KV value for your specific application. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We have multiple different videos that come out every Monday and they all talk about some form of educational content for electric power systems or radio controlled vehicles. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.